Here's a cute fact we noticed. Inside the Stormwind portal room, there are nine portals. And as of Shadowlands, there is currently space for one more portal. When Dragonflight launches, they will all be filled. That, plus the time skip, kind of got us thinking. Did Blizzard always know they would only need 10 portals? I mean, yeah, sure, obviously adding more portals would be simple, but take the time skip. Why do that now in Dragonflight? I mean, Dragonflight's story barely benefits from the time skip. From playing a few zones on Alpha, seriously, you would not know there was a time skip unless somebody told you. Well, if you consider that the time skip is setting us up for the future, then it makes a whole lot more sense. Like, even world revamp kind of sense. Today, we're going to interrogate this time skip. Then we're going to throw all the other stuff that doesn't add up into the mix. And by the end, I think you'll agree that Dragonflight could be our gateway into the biggest shakeup World of Warcraft has had in a very long time. And if you want to shake things up for yourself, get Bespoke Post, today's sponsor, at the link below. They're a sub box where you will get a wild deal. 49 bucks for what's around 70 in value. And here's the great thing about how they do it. You can pause, cancel, and swap boxes beforehand. So basically, here's the point. You get a great deal on stuff you will actually want. And they're really great at selecting things that are just cool. I've got, uh, well, this bag. It's awesome. It's in my car right now. The chef knife. Oh, man. Uh, the rest aren't here in the studio because they're in my kitchen. This thing's just brilliant. Um, outdoors gear. The whiskey set. And if you wonder what boxes are on now, well, if you're into the outdoors, then the Terra, Timeout, and Stockpile ones have got super cool items like this really nice, like, compact survival kit. Chop has also got two beautiful blades that will totally round up uh, your home kitchen setup. So, they're a quality way to get great fun for 49 bucks, helping you start a new hobby, get some cool gear, or get a lovely gift sorted out. So hit up my link down below and use promo code BELLULAR20 for 20% off your first box. Blizzard have actually confirmed what has been seen on the Alpha. Both factions, right, have a new stay a while and listen. So for the Horde, it's Lorthmar and Thalysra talking about how peaceful things have generally been and referencing their marriage. The marriage is actually something we're going to be getting a short story on. Now for the Alliance side of things, Matthias Shaw comments on the time past. We learn that uh, Rathian has been asking after Anduin, but Greymane, who has of course been hunting high and low for Anduin, does not know where he is and realizes that when he wants to be seen, he'll be seen. Turalyon leads, but they all think that the people need their king. But they know that Anduin will appear whenever he chooses to. Both reference several years, so more than two, less than ten, but recently Steve Denuser confirmed via forum post that Shadowlands lasted for two years and the Dragonflight takes place three years after the end of Shadowlands. So I suppose five odd years have passed since we dispatched Nazoth. Well's timeline has always been a bit funny for a while there, it had just back-to-back -back disaster on a near global scale. Vanilla's canonical start is the year 25, when Anduin is but 10 years old, and by Battle for Azeroth's End, which was the year 34, Anduin was 19. By Dragonflight's launch, the year 40, he will be 25 years old. Now, we learned from Steve that a world revamp won't happen off screen. If Teldrassil is to be regrown, Undercity revamped, and Gilneas resettled, that's going to happen in game. So hearing Steve say that was fantastic. It was an outright confirmation that it's not just going to happen in a book, but never be reflected in the game. So reading in between the lines, did Steve essentially confirm that these events will be seen in game? I kind of think so. And with little happening back home during Dragonflight, let's first examine the events that have been set in motion. 925 brought us back to Azeroth with some genuinely cool old world feeling quests. In the return to Lordaeron, of course, the desolate council gets reformed to kind of wrestle with the fate of a forsaken that no longer has Sylvanas. There are lots of political tensions here with Kalia by some being seen as an alliance sympathizer, a kind of a weird savior figure by others, right? There's a bunch going on there. There's the big set piece clearing the undercity of the plague that was unleashed during the fourth war 
Core finally cleaning, cleaning up after a mess we created. We help Kalia get some Maldraxian magic and uh, amalgamate the plague into a killable mob. It kind of felt like the beginning of the next chapter for the Forsaken, right? Stuff that will impact their stories and who they are from zones, you know, from Terrasfall to Hillsbrat. Because the time skip happened after we cleaned up the Undercity. So what happened of the other? What happened? Of course, none of this stuff is reflected in the current world. You go in any of those zones, they're obviously still in the Cataclysm timeline. Now, a more immediate event is when the Winter Queen gave Tyrande a seed that embodied the cycle of life and death. This is something that uh, a lot of us think could be for a new world tree, but it's a more immediate thing because we know that Tyrande features in Dragonflight and some of that story will be carried through. Now, spoilers for a few seconds here. Skip to this time code if you want to go past the spoilers. Okay, spoilers begin. Ysera is going to return, but it is seemingly in exchange for the soul of Malfurion. Uh, we'll get to that bit of lore another day when we actually know a bit more about it. But what's important here is that Tyrande demands to uh, like remain in the afterlife with Malf Malfurion, but you know he still refuses her, saying, "Should everything we hope." come to pass, the Kaldori will need you. So that shows that the two of them, by the time we're in Dragonflight, several years after patch 9.2.5, that they have big plans for their people. Now that probably has something to do with a new world tree. So speculation is rife at the minute um, as to where that tree could be planted, what could be going on for the Night Elves, but that stuff's way down the line. But other than some adventures with green dragons on the isles and maybe some, you know, spooky stuff with a loon, like when are we going to see these big plans for the night elves actually be in game? That's the big question. Okay, so I know I've said this a few times and I'm I'm definitely leading up to something here. So, when will we see all of these huge consequences, these political things play out in game? If it's not going to be 10.0, what about 11.0? Everything they're telegraphing here, from a new world tree to a resurgent undercity and Kalthalas in Lordaeron, Stormwind without a king. I mean, these things are not isolated events. These are the first dominoes to fall in something, some story that we don't know yet. Each event is talking about stuff that is, is so big and when you string them together, they are things that will change the face of the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor. This is pretty damn big stuff for the game's canon. So, let's talk about some of the other evidence. Alright, let's take a look at some in-game and data mined things. First up, there's the obvious thing, the portal rooms. This is not the most serious point here, Blizzard can always just make them bigger, but it's noteworthy that when Dragonflight launches, the final portal slot will actually be used up. Now, the portal rooms as we know them were implemented in patch 8.1.5. I mean, it sure would be interesting if they knew that 11.0 didn't need a new slot. Anyway, Battle for Azeroth also did revamp some old world things. They actually updated Warsong Gulch and Arithai Basin, and that means that they made a whole bunch of new assets. And if, as some believe, Blizzard had more Warfronts planned, is there actually 3D work from those Warfronts that would still be useful in a world revamp? In the same way that the next thing is important. So Stormwind and Orgrimmar are arguably in need of some love. I mean, the highly militarized look of Orgrimmar right now is something that comes from when Garrosh took over as war chief, and you know, he tried to make it all very orcs first, very warlike. That doesn't really fit the new horde, so even just narratively, it would make sense for Orgrimmar to kind of go back to how it used to look like in Thrall's day, but, you know, maybe a bit more developed. And the thing is that when you look at Battle for Azeroth, you do see high definition, modern, human, and orc assets that could fit that revamp. And then we've got the Undercity. It's a curious one. So it will be cleared out, it will be developed, I suppose, over the time skip. That probably won't be in-game until after Dragonflight, of course. But when it does come back, are we going to be running around a 2004 Undercity in 2024? I don't know, it doesn't feel right. Surely they'd rebuild the assets. Same goes for a new Night Elf World Tree. Darnassus is great, but it does show its age. And between Warfronts and the Legion expansion, Blizzard have made a lot of modern HD Night Elf assets. 
Hell, we even saw some new night elf ships appear in the Dragonflight data mining as well. That's quite something. And also in the Dragonflight data mining, we've seen HD Alliance Inns, castle walls, some proper old school looking orc burrows. And then when you go and look at the Dragon Isles themselves, most of the races and assets are updated old world things. Centaur, gnolls, furbolgs, things that are staples of the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor and their old questing. They're actually slowly building the blocks for a full revamp, one could say. The time skip will also impact the narrative. I mean, first, it'll give the Night Elves and the Forsaken time to actually re-establish themselves. It'll let Stormwind's politics play out, and I think that could be major. Turalyon will have an even more stable base of power, and he won't just have been regent for a small amount of time when Antwin has gone into the Shadowlands. No, he at this stage could have been regent for five years, six years, seven years. The nobles will probably like him. And of course, Anduin, well, he'll be able to go through a lot of personal development in the time that he will have spent off screen. It may allow seeds too, the blizzard have sowed, to grow as well. Take the alternate Draenor situation. Years will have passed since we helped the Maghar make their escape. And in that time, Yorel will have prepared her invasion. I mean, what else is she going to do? She either works out how to go through the portal and invade us, or she conquers the other continent, if there is any form of civilization on that, on A.U. Draenor. But point is, by this time, the whole of A.U. Draenor will be united under her light bound. What will she do next? It is seemingly an expansionist philosophy that she has. That's why she was not happy to coexist with the orcs. Why she drove the Maghar out. Ashara, Zalatath, and Medivh will have had even more years doing whatever the hell they're currently doing. We have no idea. So you get the point. This time skip makes a lot of stories feel more plausible because they won't have just happened year to year to year to year to year. Perhaps by the time that we are done with the main body of Dragonflight content, we will return with a patch 10.3.5 or something like that, one that begins to rebuild the core of World of Warcraft. Also, while it is a book, exploring Azeroth Northrend may do some work here. The first book took place after BFA, the second one also took place after BFA, perhaps even during Shadowlands. Exploring Azeroth Northrend releases this year, likely close to Wrath Classic and Dragonflight. So when will it be set? I would say, potentially after Shadowlands? Here's the thing, they could either set it after Shadowlands but before Dragonflight and use it to flesh out some of the time skip, or if they set it during Shadowlands or before the time skip, then we'll know that they are just earmarking off that period of time to explore elsewhere. Now, of course, one thing they could just do is have a prequel novel that explains the time skip somehow, but we, and now also Ian, have talked about the risks of putting important narrative context outside of the game. So, a full world revamp. It's a bit mad, but uh, hey, if they're going to do it, 2024 and 11.0 is the time. I mean, if you're going to revamp it, revamp it after you've done a time skip right when you have a huge library of updated old world assets, right when World of Warcraft turns two decades old. And that's why I'm confident in saying that for 11.0, it's a real possibility. Who knows, maybe Yorel will invade through the portal, Medivh will return, and uh, we'll do some sort of partially revamped Azeroth. Who knows, wouldn't that be a bit mad? It'd certainly be exciting. We got people interested. I'm talking again. It would drum up some buzz. So let me know. What do you think is going to happen here? How do you think they're going to make good on the time skip? Let me know down below. That's it for today. Have a good one. And I'll see you next time.